Hi folks and welcome to TK Power Sports and RVs. So you've decided to buy a PWC but you don't know what the heck to get. Well today we're going to talk about it. Let's start by just being clear about what we are comparing here. So on the one side we have the Yamaha Jet Blaster, which is based on the Yamaha EX and it just packs a number of unique features. So the EX lineup is Yamaha's Recreation Light lineup. Rec Light are the lightest, most inexpensive units that you can buy. Now from Sea-Doo, that's going to be the Spark lineup. And from Kawasaki, you do have the STX 160, although that thing is a little bit bigger and significantly heavier than the other two models. So I'd say the only two real Rec Light competitors are the Yamaha EX and the Sea-Doo Spark. On the flip side, we have the Yamaha FX Cruiser HO. This thing comes from the luxury segment, which represents some of the largest, heaviest, and most expensive models out there. Now, once you step out of the Rec Light segment, even just one step up into recreation, every single PWC gets larger and heavier. So essentially, you can look at this video as Rec Light versus everything else. If you go for one of these base machines, how is it going to compare to some of the larger, heavier, and fancier machines from all of these brands? And now let's get into it. Right off the top, let me tell you, we have actually done full individual reviews on both of these units. And if you wanna see those, I'll throw links down in the description box. Cause in this video, we're gonna talk about both of them, but really focus on the differences. And the first big difference, you're gonna notice it right away, is the price tag. You can see the prices right here. But yes, if you go rec light, you're gonna end up saving four, five, six thousand dollars on a brand new machine. Now there's definitely a reason for that. And let's get into that right now. Now what we're actually looking at today is the Jet Blaster, but Yamaha offers a whole lineup of recreation light machines in the EX lineup. And then if you're talking about Sea-Doo, well, you're gonna be looking at the Sea-Doo Spark. And these machines, like I said, they're inexpensive, and that's because they're lightweight, they're small, and they don't get a lot of features. So you can see up here, you get a really simple little LCD screen. In fact, it's nice you get a screen. Uh, you have your normal control, start, stop, a small storage between your legs. And that's about it. And of course, for someone who just wants to go out and have fun on the water, that's more than enough. But now let's go look at the other unit and I'll show you all of those fancy features you can get if you're willing to pay. Now the other thing you're paying for besides the physical size are all the features. So I can show you up on the handlebars. We got things like cruise control here. We have a fancy slow speed docking mode on this machine. And then we even have a touch screen up here. It gives you all kinds of information, fuel economy, navigation, water temperature. The other thing we have on this unit is the connectivity. So we have all the storage. There's actually a spot for my phone down in there, which is nice. And you get USB ports down in the storage so you can keep your phone charged. Now, once you take your phone out, you hook it up to the Bluetooth and you can actually crank your tunes using these speakers. What's even more, Yamaha has actually added a microphone down here. So if you have Alexa on your phone, you can talk to your phone when it's tucked into your PWC, ask it to play you some music and it'll start playing on the lake. So once again, just like a modern car these days, the connectivity on these PWCs is really quite something, but you got to go up in the range to start getting some of these features. The other thing you're going to find if you go for a rec light machine, there's not a lot of storage. Again, these things are pretty basic. You can see here in a jet blaster, just a little baby nose storage. You're lucky to get your sandals in there versus this. You could fit an entire cooler in there, a couple outfits and still have some space to spare. So yeah, you get way more storage. Now there's actually one more bit of storage on this unit. It's underneath your rear seat here. And this one's even cooler because that whole thing comes right out. So if you want to pack a little picnic lunch and go to the island, take it with you then pop it back in the seat and you're good to go. So yeah, if bringing stuff with you is important, you want to get a bigger unit. So just like with stuff, if bringing people with you is a priority, you want to go for the bigger unit. It's going to have just a much bigger seat. You can see it's kind of stepped here for all three of the riders and you get some nice big handles on here. The other thing you're going to get on a bigger unit is a much bigger deck on the back. Now this is Yamaha's accessory rec deck right here. So this is, you know, an add on, but I love it. It's just huge. It's easy to climb up out of the water onto it. This thing has a huge ladder that hangs down. You can see me getting up onto it right here. I'm gonna climb up on this FX and look, it's got a whole ladder. That's amazing how 
easy that is. Wild. Don't forget to put your ladder up. If you're taking the rec light, this is technically a three up unit, but you can see it only has sort of the one step up in the seat and then it's just flat. The passengers are not gonna be that comfortable. If you fit three people on here, they're going to be three smaller people. And then when it comes time to climb up, give Yamaha credit, they do have a pretty nice boarding step right there, which makes it easier, but you're not gonna have nearly as much space to play with back here with uh, unlike the machine over there. So I've mentioned the size and the weight difference quite a bit. And now that I'm actually here on the water, I'll show you what that means. So again, when I stand up on this machine and I stand on one foot well, it starts to take on water. <laughs> I do not want to get my microphone wet. So there you go. I cannot stand on one foot well on this machine. And that's because again, I weigh almost as much as the machine does. And that's just going to be the case when you go wreck light. These things are so lightweight. They just don't offer you the stability that the larger machine is going to. That's the first thing you really need to know. Now when you're actually riding at speed, what the lightweight translates into is sort of flickable, tight turns, but also that when you're taking a wave kind of from the side, the water has a tendency to push this unit around quite a bit. So you're really kind of working with the waves rather than a big heavy unit where you can kind of crash right through the wave and you don't feel like it has an effect on you. You feel everything underneath this small lightweight unit. And again, that's why this is truly more fun because it's just so light and it responds really quickly. It's more like a little firecracker in the water. It definitely takes a lot more rider input to actually get out there and have fun on this thing. But if that's what you're looking for, an involved ride, you definitely want to go for a lighter machine. Now I keep talking about recreation light machines, but there is a trend with these machines these days, and that is to kind of trick them out and have fun with them. From Yamaha, we have the Jet Blaster. From sea you have the Spark Trix. And what they've done is they've added taller handlebars so it's easier to stand up, but then what they've really done is they make the jet back there adjust further than on the standard unit. And what that does, it allows you to get the nose right out of the water and do water wheelies. You can see them right here on this Yamaha. And again, this is just not something that that's even possible on those bigger, heavier units because you just, you wouldn't have the control. Here on this little jet blaster, once I'm up doing those water wheelies, I can control it just using my body weight, just using my knees to kind of turn the unit. So once again, that control is way better on this little guy. Now I'm sure by now you're probably asking, well, which one is quicker? And you know what? Let's go ahead and do a drag race so we can find out. Okay, so we're going from the drag race here. Off the line, I almost seem to beat it. So we're going to line up as close as we can. You ready? Ready. right there off the line yeah they're kind of close but honestly if you want something with some true speed you got to get one of these big units today heck this is just the fx cruiser high output you can also get the svho which is a supercharged version of this engine so if all out raw speed is what you're chasing you actually want to go for one of these bigger heavier units because they just don't put massive power plants in those small little lightweight guys so besides just the power here i already talked about the stability so now let me show it off here on this fx cruiser i can stand on one foot well all by myself and look i'm not taking on water close but not taking on water and that again just goes to show you big heavy machine absolute stability in the water and so when you're loading off the dock getting people on and off the back it just makes it a heck of a lot easier and then when you're actually moving at speed like i mentioned before this machine doesn't get pushed around by the waves as much this machine will kind of really blast right through a wave whereas the lightweight machines you're really kind of getting pushed around by the lake now the trade-off there this isn't quite as much fun. It doesn't turn as quick. It doesn't come out of the water. It doesn't love to jump. It's not flickable. That's the word I always come back to. That little jet blaster just responds the second you give it input. This thing is a big, slow, lumbering, comfy couch out in the water. And uh, that's really what comes across when you're sitting here, even just from look at the seat, how wide this big seat is compared to that little skinny kind of dirt bike seat. So everything about the jet blaster is aggressive and everything about this FX Cruiser is just comfortable.
Well, folks, we have come to the end of this video. Now, I think with these two units we're looking at right here, the answer is basically in the name. The Jet Blaster here is for if you want to go out blasting. If you prioritize having fun on the water and you don't really care about bringing people with you, well, then you go wreck light. But if you just want to go for a cruise, the FX Cruiser is the way to go. This machine is all about bringing people and stuff in total comfort, and you could spend a whole day out on the water. So like I said, that is it for this video. Let me know which one of these PWCs you would buy. And then as always, do not forget to go below, leave us a comment, hit like, hit subscribe, and make sure you come right back here to TK Power Sports and RVs to see what we're testing next. See ya.